Hi, my name is Max and this is my friend Hornbill. When I was preparing to buy these birds, I was trying to find at least some information on how to keep them and uh, just what it actually is to live with hornbills because it's completely different from parrots and uh, other birds. So um, turned out that there wasn't a lot of information available and um, there are some videos on YouTube uh, which are not really informative. So eventually when I got these birds I um, sort of had to learn my mistakes because uh, there wasn't a lot of people uh, I knew uh, keeping the species. And I wanted to film this video for quite a long time because uh, if anybody <laughs> anywhere is uh, thinking about buying this, please don't bite me anymore, is if anyone is thinking about buying this, <laughs> buying these birds, um, uh, I hope this video will be informative. I'll try to make it informative and I'll try to include almost everything I can uh, about the care uh, and I'll try to compare these birds to other species of birds which are normally and most commonly kept in captivity like parrots, uh, corvids, uh, you know, rumfestids as toucans. So sit back, relax and enjoy the tutorial on how to survive in the house with two hornbill. Let's roll! Initially I was after grey hornbill but at that point I couldn't actually find any so I decided okay I'll just stick with whatever I could find and this is how we ended up with Steven. Steven came from Netherlands and a year later after quite a lot of search and efforts we managed to get a female from Bel Belgium and um, this is how we got Imke. Wonder Deccan hornbills are amongst the smallest of 53 species of hornbills. They are found in sub-Saharan Africa, but unlike Asian hornbills, they prefer drier climate and mainly found in savannas with predominance of acacia trees. In zoos you're likely to see larger species of these birds like Palawan, uh, Rufus, uh, Papuan hornbills and the largest one, the largest species, um, African ground hornbill. Wonder Deccan hornbills are predominantly terrestrial birds. They do fly and they fly really well and they rest and sleep on trees but they prefer spending most of their time on the ground. Obviously because they don't have hands and fingers they try everything with their beak. Uh, they actually have a tongue, it's really small, you can see it in this picture. There is a theory that hornbills and toucans developed convergently but hornbills have their own features like zygodactyl feet, you can see it on this picture and one trait that all hornbills share is a lack of secondary covered feathers under wings. This gives the flight quite a lot of noise but it actually doesn't stop them from being very agile flyers. When I was thinking about housing I was initially thinking of just building a big enclosure and putting them in there and just letting them out from time to time when I'm home because you know it does work with parrots and I thought hey why not? They're not birds of prey, so they won't be thrashing around, they won't be breaking their feathers. Uh, but I didn't really have much of experience with these birds, you know, apart from treating one or two. And I didn't really know that they actually don't like being in cages. And what happened to Steven was he actually started thrashing around in a cage and breaking his feathers. So in about a month after, you know, leaving in the enclosure, he ended up breaking almost every tip last probably two millimeters, three millimeters of each long feather in his tail and in his wings. So I had to convert the room into a hornbill safe room and uh, just pretty much uh, give it to the birds. I still kept the enclosure because sometimes I need to lock them in there, like to draft the room. Um, they also like sleeping in there and they like taking sand baths. Inca for some reason tries to sandbathe in the carpet. I don't know why, maybe it just looks like sand to her, but she equally sandbathes in, in the enclosure as well. One interesting feature of almost all hornbills is they don't drink, regardless if they live in uh, lush rainforests or in 
you know, sub-Saharan desert, they don't drink. Only four species of hornbills have been observed drinking water, and uh, this does not apply to wander decans and the whole genus of docus. In fact, these birds actually hate water, and these are rare moments where they actually enjoy really light misting just for a few seconds, and then they frantically start jumping around in the enclosure trying to dry themselves. So generally they just sandbathe, and this is how they keep the plumage in prime condition. Now the very important topic of UV light. To me, as a veterinarian, it's very difficult to explain to people that birds do need UVB light and they actually need it as much as reptiles, especially African birds and especially birds of open spaces, that these the species who live in savannas, who are almost constantly exposed to high uh, levels of UVB lighting. So remember that providing your pet bird with the source of UVB is as important as if you have a bearded dragon or a tortoise, it's exactly the same thing. Now the most interesting topic, feeding. When, again, when I was doing my research, all, all the articles that I read, um, articles in internet stated that these birds prefer the diet of um, seeds, fruit, vegetables, berries and insects. Of course I didn't really think about how this species feeds in the wild. I was too preoccupied with getting the birds. So I, th I thought, okay, alright, cool, I'll just get them a big 15 kilo bag of four mil pellets and a fruit, a plentiful, <laughs> sour vegetables, and of course I'll get them some mealworms. Unfortunately, it turned out that this species is almost entirely insectivorous. They will take some seeds and, you know, they, they can be trained to eat pellets. Unfortunately, in our case, this didn't really work, so uh, still 80% of their diet is live insects. Mostly mealworms, morio worms and crickets. Feeding time is always interesting. They, they're very agile catching insects in mid-air. Sometimes I just buy them some flies or some black soldier flies and they just amazingly catch them in mid-air. Really, really interesting to watch. On days when I give them belly to diet, they uh, just have something like this. It's a chopped mouse, some greens, some dried uh, insects, and um, sometimes some uh, um, vegetables. On days when they receive this type of diet, I don't give them live insects because uh, that would be just a waste of food because they'll just eat live insects and try to sort of like make it throughout the day on minimum of uh, live food. Uh, when they receive nothing just uh, pellets or you know this type of food, uh, eventually closer to midday they'll start eating it and uh, this is always, almost always a bit of a struggle for both of us. So that would probably be the main and the biggest inconvenience of keeping these birds in the house. Um, you know, every now and then you'll stumble on a cricket somewhere in a doorway or, uh, you know, in the middle of the night when you go to loo and you go like, oh, look, there is a cricket. But generally, they actually are not, from the feeding point of view, not that much different from, you know, if you have a few lizards uh, or if you, if you keep reptiles and, you know, you'll probably encounter the same problems. One thing that I actually didn't know about hornbills and only discovered just last summer was that they actually produce pellets. They regurgitate them just like birds of prey and sometimes corvids and other species of birds. Uh, they, they only produce them when they eat something like rodents with bones and fur, uh, grass, um, sometimes uh, pieces of um, cuttlefish bone. Um, and this is not a regular thing to find in a house, so uh, they will only drop them from time to time. 
Another interesting thing is they actually have taste for dandelions. I don't know why they like them so much, but they they'll eat quite a lot. Uh, again, interestingly, only um, when given by hand. If I leave dandelion leaves in their feeder, they won't touch them. They normally follow me when I feed tortoises in mornings, and uh, they have a little bit of um, dandelions or other garden weeds. One thing which I didn't mention, which is very important obviously, is uh, the waste from the birds. You can see I use towels and rugs, which I just throw on top of a carpet, and I wash them every now and then. Uh, usually with towels, I just put them in the washing machine every now and then. Um, comparing to corvids like crows and magpies, hornbill droppings don't smell, and this is a big advantage. We don't have any problems with the smell in a house, uh, which is great. And also the noise from these birds, uh, I'm not sure if you could hear, uh, if you noticed, throughout the whole video there are no screaming, no um, loud noises, uh, which is quite interesting because the loudest noise from this bird you can hear, you'll hear it in a second, this is it. So yeah, the, the best feature of these birds is they don't make any loud noise and this Quiet quacking is pretty much all you can hear. Hornbills are quite intelligent birds. I would compare their intelligence level to uh, maybe magpies or even crows. They need to be provided with a lot of activities, a lot of toys, and they love investigating in new things. So moving, moving toys around the room every other day also is very important as well because they don't like when things stay the same for a long time. One thing which I love about these birds is they are not conservatives unlike parrots and they love guests, they like when people come around and um, it's always an experience for them and, and to some degree an entertainment because they like to test people as well and they see who is afraid of them, who isn't and generally it just takes a few minutes for them to get used to a new person and they'll, then they'll start taking treats from hands and behave absolutely normally. Again, the main challenge of keeping these species is to make sure they're not bored. So inventing something new almost every other day just to make sure they're not bored is paramount because they are quite intelligent and you don't want these birds to be bored. In this particular case, I just filled their mealworm box with different toys and pieces of cardboard and even a little bit of wooden shavings just to stimulate them to look for food and this seems to be working quite well. Sometimes even crafting something silly like this would actually uh, keep them busy for some 30-40 minutes which is great. On some occasions I just give them adult locusts which is again a very interesting toy because sometimes they just like to chase them around uh, before killing them and eating them. Unfortunately keeping other birds and small animals on the same territory with them is a no-no. They will kill and eat pretty much anything. They won't touch tortoises because I do think they uh, have a genetic memory that adult tortoises cannot be killed and eaten because they're just too big and strong. They'll definitely eat baby tortoise. And uh, this video demonstrates how the hornbills react to a Chinese painted quail. So already the enclosure is locked and everyone is safe, uh, but they will definitely try and kill the quail, give them a chance. And this is a video of Steven when he was just about three months of age, and this is the first time he's meeting the tortoises. Despite the fact that these birds seem to be very exotic, a lot of people actually do keep them, and I think they probably are a little bit more common in uh, the United States. And this video was sent to me by my colleague Daniel. This is his pair of Wonder Deccan Hornbills. Uh, they're just babies, they're just juvenile pair. Um, they're quite tame as well, as you can see, but uh, as long as I know, uh, his birds were hand reared. I did promise to mention the differences between the parrots and 
the hornbills. And again, I think these birds actually in many ways are easier in keeping than uh, parrots of the similar size. Generally because parrots are quite loud and they're quite destructive. They, they, they need to be kept in cages and they're not safe around cables, they're not safe around furniture. And unfortunately, these are the main reasons why these birds change homes that often. So to me, keeping a hornbill in the house actually turned out to be much easier than keeping a big parrot. It definitely is quite an experience living with these birds and uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to provide them with better environment uh, and outdoor enclosure uh, in summertime and um, post more videos about them and hopefully they breed and uh, I'll be able to share more videos about um, how they reproduce because it's very interesting. Thank you very much for watching.